We want to say greetings to everyone and thank you all for joining us today. Of course, my name is Brother Hawk Bolden, and uh, as always, we're so glad to be able to bring you the word of the Lord uh, for this morning. Amen. We're just I'm so excited to be able to share with you the things that God have laid on my heart uh, to share with you, and uh, I'm just so thankful to God for this opportunity. Uh, as you can see, of course, we're in a different location, but... Um, we still want to share with you the things that God have laid on our hearts to share. Amen. So if you have your Bibles, let's go to the book of Hebrews. And we're going to get right into the word. And this is something personal for me. Uh, this is something very personal for me. And I'll share uh, something with you that, um, that have been going on personally in my own personal life. And I pray that this is something that will help you as well. Amen. Uh, we're going to actually start reading. I'm sorry, the 10th chapter of the book of Hebrews and uh, uh, verse 19. Amen. We'll start reading there. It says, Having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way, which he hath consecrated for us through the veil. That is to say, his flesh, and having an high priest over the house of God. And so here, uh, he's telling us, basically, that we should have boldness to enter into the Holy of Holies. So let me explain what he's talking about there. Uh, in, in Back in the Old Covenant, uh, the high priest, uh, who was a man at the time, you know, um, he would enter into what they call the holiest of holies. That was the place where God dwelt in the temple. And there was only one man that could go in there and that was designated to go in there and that was the high priest. And they would put a, a rope around his uh, leg or his ankle because if there was any sins in his life that was unchecked or that wasn't repented of, he would drop dead in the presence of God because of, because of his sin. And so uh, nobody else could go in because nobody had been consecrated as a high priest but this particular man and so if they heard a thump and of course they would call for him and if he didn't answer they just figured that he had dropped dead and so they would you know pull him out of the holiest of holies uh, using the rope that was tied around his ankle or leg and so you can imagine after a few times of that happening that people would um be kind of leery of going in there. I'm sure that, you know, some people wanted the position of high priest, but at the same time, you know, uh, th that was a big responsibility. And so here, the writer of Hebrews is telling us, basically, we should have boldness to enter into the presence of God. It says, verse 20, it says, by the blood of Jesus. In other words, it's the blood of Jesus, faith in that blood that we are cleansed from our sins it says by a new and living way which he has consecrated for us through the veil that is to say his flesh in other words there was a veil that was put up in that temple that led into the holy of holies and so now that new veil is his flesh what he died for us when he died for us that veil was rent from top to bottom in the natural temple you see that that oops, meant no more separation between God and man, no more priesthood between God and man. And so this is telling us that we should have a boldness to enter in, all right? Uh, verse 21 says, And having a high priest over the house of God, verse 22, Let us draw near with a true heart and full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. You see that? says draw near with the true heart in full assurance of faith with a true heart draw near to God don't try to sneak up to him in other words when in your prayer life when you are approaching God you should be bold with it now we're not talking about being arrogant but be bold don't don't go to God you know as if you're afraid or in fear or anything like that now there's a difference between human fear and reverential fear and we're talking about going to God with, with a full assurance. Number one, knowing your place in God. Now that's very important there, that you know who you are in God. We're not talking about bragging about it, but just knowing who you are in God. 
Verse 23 says, Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful that promised. Everybody see that? Hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering. In other words, today, be who you are, the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Be that. And if tomorrow you do something that's contrary to the word of God, maybe you slip up or whatever the case is, repent and move on. Don't don't change it to today I'm the righteousness of God and then tomorrow, woe is me, I'm just a sinner and I don't know what I'm doing and you know, no. This says to approach God, hold fast to the profession of your faith without wavering. If God saved you, you saved. Tomorrow, if you slip up, you do something contrary, you repent. Because, because God knows your heart, whether your heart is truly with him to begin with, you see. And so if your heart is truly with him, you repent and you move on. Don't beat yourself over the head and don't allow the enemy to beat you over the head with it. Hold fast the profession of your faith. Today, if you're a son of God or a daughter of God, tomorrow, be a son of God or a daughter of God. You see, the, don't let your bad thought, don't let your bad temper, don't let any of those things persuade you that you're otherwise. You have to hold fast the profession of your faith. You see that? Now, we're not talking about making excuses for sin. Of course, you know, we preach against sin, but you know, you have to hold fast the profession of your faith. Don't waver. You be who you are. Uh, be who God have called you to be. Amen. So now let's go down. To verse 35 it says cast not away therefore your confidence which hath great recompense of reward for ye have need of patience that after ye have done the will of God ye might receive the promise now I'm in a different location let me explain why you know and I, I won't name any names but uh, uh, somebody that's very near and dear to me uh, had a bad accident and uh, the doctors, of course, they, they're coming with the report that they're coming with. But we, we who believe in God, uh, we believe God's report that this young man is going to be healed and fully restored in his body. We believe that. And uh, so it, it happened last week, but uh, my wife and I, we didn't travel to the location until uh, yesterday. And, and, and the reason why we came was not just to offer support to the other families, members, and things like that, but also to do what God has sent us here to do. Uh, I've had a dream that I was supposed to go pray for this young man and that the Lord would raise him up, that, you know, I saw him opening his eyes. And so I shared that with the young man's daughter when I got to the hospital. And uh, she was excited, of course. And so when we, we were allowed to go into the visiting room, um, I prayed for him and I could see her kind of looking at me, you know, expecting. And of course, this is a little pressure there, you know, but and, and so uh, after praying for him, I'm looking at his eyes, waiting on them to open. And it looked like it appeared to three of us in the room, at least that he was trying to open his eyes, uh, but he didn't open his eyes. And of course, you know, I, I'm a man and uh, I, I've gone around to different places, you know, for most of my ministry praying for people. And some people, they would be healed instantly where you could see it right then. And then some people I would pray and it might be a week later or it might be a day later or whatever. And sometimes you get used to praying for people and they be healed right away and, and used to rejoicing right away. Uh, from the manifestation of the healing and then sometimes you, you see people uh, and it may take a little while but it's really all according to God's timing but in this case it, it was something that's very near and dear to my heart I love this uh, young man you know I have a, a personal relationship with him and so it, it was something that was very near and dear to my heart and so when uh, he didn't open his eyes last night it really bothered me it really really bothered me you see it and I thought I began to question Lord I felt like you sent me down here to pray for this young man why is it that his eyes didn't open and I began to pray like God I don't want to be somebody that's false I don't want to just have dreams and it's it's 
really the it's conjured up by things of my own heart so I I don't want to even move in that particular ministry anymore if what you're telling me or show me don't come to pass is it me that's just dreaming these things on my own it's one of those things that could really really get you down and really discourage you especially when you're close to a person you see and so I asked the Lord I prayed to the Lord I said Lord I need a word from you I need to understand I, I need a word from you I need some encouragement because it just felt like you know I hated walking out of that room last night without hearing him speak to me and speak to his wife and to his father that was there as well and to my wife I hated walking out of there you see that and so I I felt like I failed I felt like you know not not that God couldn't do it but I felt like the part that the Lord has showed me to play in it that maybe some kind of way I missed him and you know and and things like that and so I asked the Lord Lord I I need for you to show me something in your word that's going to help me and so this is what the Lord have laid on my heart to share with you all as well look at what verse 35 says cast not away therefore your confidence which hath great recompense of reward in other words don't throw away what God have revealed to you. Now I'm talking to you as an individual. If God have shown you something, you stand on it. Don't throw that out the door. It says, cast not away, therefore your confidence, which hath great recompense of reward. Your com God rewards your confidence in him. God rewards your faith. Let's go and keep reading verse 36. For ye have need of patience that after ye have done the will of God, ye might receive the promise. You see that? So it's not enough to just have faith. Patience is the brother of faith. You can pray for somebody that the Lord will heal them. or You can even believe in something that God has shown you is going to take place in your own personal life. But you know what we mess up at? Sometimes we want to put a stamp or a time on what God is going to do. And when it's and when it surpasses the time that we've stamped on it, we can lose hope. Why? Because our faith has to be coupled with patience. Our faith has to be coupled with patience. You know why? Because if you put a, a timeline on faith, after that timeline, faith runs out. Now it's going into hopelessness. You see? But pure faith. Is this God? I don't know when you're going to do it, but I know you're going to do it. And you have to have the patience to to that that will help that faith. You see that that will help to carry that faith. And if you're not careful, if you put a time line on what God is going to do, when God don't move in what you the time that you think He should move, you can lose hope. But we just read in verse 35, cast not away therefore your confidence which hath great recompense of reward. You see that? Alright, verse 36, for ye have need of patience that after ye have done the will of God ye might receive the promise. So, it was the will of God for me to come down and pray for this young man. But it says, after you have done the will of God, you see that? Ye might receive the promise. And, and that gives you the idea that the promise is based on the fact that I can hold on to even after I've done the will of God. I can hold on to what God what God have shown me. Not put a timeline on it. I can hold on to what God have shown me concerning this young man and he's shown others concerning this young man and you can you can receive the reward that God has for you if you hold on to what God have shown you. That's why it's important to have patience with faith. Let's keep reading. For yet a little while and and he that shall come will come and will not tarry. You see that? And that's that's what we have to bank on. God's going to come. He's going to show up. You, you just wait on him. You see? Verse 38. Now the just shall live by faith. But if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. You see that? The just shall live by faith. But look at what this says. If any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. You can, you know, God can show you things that's going to take place in your life. He can show you things that he wants to do in your life. And if you're not careful, when those if you can have an expectancy of you know in a particular timeline, and when God don't show up, you can draw back. 
when God don't show up when you think he should show up, you can draw back. You can say, okay, God, apparently I done missed it or something that went wrong somewhere. Maybe I'm just in the wrong line of business or maybe I've done something wrong. And, and you know what? God says my soul won't have any pleasure in you when you do that. You, 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 can, you can hinder yourself receiving the reward that you've been expecting by drawing back, by losing hope, by losing confidence. First thing you have to do is when you go before God himself, you have to have boldness to enter into that throne. Enter into, you know, his presence, you see. And then after you've entered into his presence and you've made your request known, you have to hold on to what you have stated, to what you have declared. You have to hold on to the promise of God. After you've even even after you've done your part, hold on to what God says. And don't allow the enemy to talk you out of um what God is going to do. You see that? A lot of times what happens is God is working behind the scenes and we don't see it. And because we don't see it, we become uh we we become despaired, we become hopeless. You see that? But you have to trust God that not only will he do it, but that it's already done. If his word have said it, it's already a done deal even when you don't see it. It's a done deal. And my prayer is that you will hold on to that. Don't let time cause you to lose what God have promised to you. Don't let impatience cause you to lose what God have promised to you. Don't draw back. You keep moving forward. Keep believing God. Keep believing the promises and watch him bring those things to pass. Amen. We thank you all for joining us today. We pray that something was said that have helped you. And uh, we look forward, of course, to speaking with you uh, in the future concerning God's word. Have a blessed day.